All right. Good morning, everybody. It is 830. So we're going to get started. Um, my name is Laura Cahill. I am one of the district technology coaches in the Office of Instructional Technology and Digital Learning. So we're going to be together for just about an hour this morning. So um, I'm just pulling up my agenda on my other computer so that we can stay on track. So I want to just walk through what um, my plan is and what we um, will try to accomplish this morning. Um, first of all, we're going to do this in what's considered a traditional webinar format. So basically what that means is um, typically participants are not using uh, video um, or audio so that I can um, present if you're not using your video so if you if you click the stop video so that there's a red line through it that will actually ensure that um, things move along a little bit faster in terms of the bandwidth for the internet so the more video we have running the slower it could be um, so what I plan is to do a a 40 minute demonstration that I am going to record. So you may see, and we had a question about it this morning, you may see a blinking light up in the, in the top of your screen that says this is being recorded. Um, I'm not recording it to track anything that you are doing. I'm recording the session so that I can send it out to you after the fact. So that way you have the video to refer back to. I am only going to send the demonstration portion of the video out to you so that I'm not um, violating anybody's privacy by sending any questions that you might ask during the question and answer portion. So after about 40 minutes of demonstration, we'll have time to do um, about 15 minutes of time to do question and answer session in the chat box. So um, ideally it works best if we if we use the chat box so that we're not all yelling out questions. Um, and then what I'll do is I will go through the chat box and answer the questions um, that I can answer quickly. The nice thing about having it in the chat box is I can attend to that chat box later and send you videos and emails to answer any questions that don't get answered during this time. At the end of the hour, I will give you a code to sign in to TeachPoint. So that code will come at the end of the hour and you will automatically earn one PDP for signing in in TeachPoint with that code. So I'll explain that when the time comes. And then you'll receive an email from me later today with the video of the demonstration, uh, the slides with some additional resources where you can find other help, and um, a feedback form because our department is always hoping to constantly improve on everything we do so that we're supporting you through all of this. Um, I called this session Beyond the Basics of Google Classroom, but I want to offer a disclaimer there for a second. Um, Google does not have a set of skills for Google Classroom that are considered basic and a set of skills that are considered intermediate and a set of skills that are considered advanced. Just from my use, I've been using Google Classroom for about three years now. So just from my use, I'm pretty familiar with um, what people learn when they first learn to use it and then sort of some of the features that um, come in as we get more comfortable with Google Classroom. For those of you who were signed up by yesterday morning-ish, I think I sent it out at about 8.30 yesterday morning, I sent out a Google form, a survey, just asking what you hope to get out of this session. And um, my, my Google uh, Home is speaking to me right now because it thinks I'm speaking to her. Um, so the responses that I got, uh, most of the responses were about just using Google Classroom to communicate with students, to give them feedback and or grades, um, and just really how to organize the Google Classroom and attach resources. So those were mostly what people asked for. So we're going to talk a lot about that, um, and then we'll go into some settings. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get out of my slides. If I can do that, there we go. It was just running slowly. Okay, so I'm going to start from the classroom home page. When you go to classroom.google.com or you go to classroom through the waffle and you click on the classroom icon, it takes you to the Google Classroom home page. Here you can see a tile for every classroom that you have either created as a teacher or that you are a student in, or if another teacher has created a classroom and added you as a teacher. So these are all the classrooms that you are involved in. Each tile represents one classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and click the classroom that I created for us to use today. And um, I set it as uh, this little coffee theme up here because it's morning. So I just want to show you this is a little thing, but it might be fun um, for you to set your, your classrooms with different themes. When you open up your classroom, right here in the header, there's a little option to select a theme. And it takes you out to a variety of themes. So depending on the content that you teach, maybe you want to choose something like that. Or if you know your students are interested in arts and sports and other things, you can choose different themes. So I chose the coffee theme for us this morning. So as of right now, I only have one student in this classroom. So if you have taken Dante's Google um, Classroom 101 session, you probably have seen how to add people. But I'm going to just show you really quickly. If you go into the People tab, you have the option to add teachers by clicking on Invite Teachers. So maybe you want to create a classroom um, in a content area department or by grade level and you can have multiple teachers. Um, I think the limit right now for Google for Education is 20 teachers in a classroom. I'll correct that if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Students, um, you can click here to add students. That's one way to add a student. So I added my trainer account as a student so that I can show you both sides of what this looks like. The other way you can add students is by sharing this class code with them. So if they go to classroom.google.com, I'll show you what this looks like. From the home page in the upper right corner, there is a plus sign to either create a new class or to join a class. So if you're working with older students um, who might be able to, you know, find all of, uh, all of these places, what you could do is from your classroom, simply share this code with them. So you copy the code and paste it in an email and add your students to the class that way. So most of the, the, the questions that you had as you sent in your responses to your survey were about communicating and um, creating assignments. So let's take a look at, we're going to start just by creating an assignment. Assignments and work all happen in the classwork tab. So let's click on the classwork tab. And the first time you use it, there's always these little um, sort of prompts and things that will help you. And I'm going to share resources with you later that have lots of videos and help to use Google Classroom as well. So in the Classwork tab, I'm going to click Create, and I'm going to create an assignment. So let's start there. And if you've seen Dante's um, webinar, you will have seen this, but we're going to go into now you know, what you can do with this. So I'm going to call this uh, Sample Assignment. And I am going to say, please write a sentence on a sample assignment document 
attached below. So if, the, if these are the directions that you've given to students, let's say that you've sent out something that you want them to do. You have a document that you want them to complete or to work with. You need to add that document there. So I haven't attached anything below yet. So let's take a look at that. I'm asking students to write a sentence on the sample document attached below. Maybe I have created this assignment before previously. So I can click add and I can find that document in my Google Drive or I can find it downloaded on my computer. So if I wanted to add something from Google Drive, I could click Google Drive and it pulls up a dialog box that's communicating with my Google Drive. So let's say that I wanted students to um, complete this particular document. I want them to add information to that. I would click on that document and I would click add. This is a great way to communicate with students because you're sharing something with them um, just digitally. They, they can receive it, they can see it, um, they can edit it depending on the settings. So let's look at the settings. Right now, students are going to have access to this document and it says they can view this file. So maybe you're just sending out something you want them to read um, or watch, but maybe you want them to be able to edit it. So if you click on this and you say students can edit the file, that means that all of the students in this classroom will be editing that one file. So I just want to be clear about that. If you say students can edit a file, that means that all students can edit that one file which is great if you want students working on a collaborative slideshow or maybe a document where they're all just um, having a conversation with each other perhaps that you want to um, be involved in. If you want students to create their own version, their own copy, when you create the assignment you click make a copy for each student. What happens when you click make a copy for each student? As soon as you assign this assignment, Google automatically puts a copy of that document for each student attached to their account in Classroom. So if you make changes to that, to that original document after the fact, they won't see those changes. They will see the version that you sent out when you assigned this assignment. So just make sure that the document is the way you want it to be when you click make copy for each student and then click assign. There are more parts to this. So let's say this is not the right document. I don't want to use this document. You can actually create a document for students to work on right from the assignment. So I can click create and I can decide which type of document I want students to create. So let's say I just want to have them type a sentence in the document. When I click on that, it opens up a document and I can call this, it's good to title everything as soon as it opens, I'm going to call this sample assignment document. Now the, the assignment is just saying please write a sentence on the sample document attached below. So I don't really need to put any directions here, but if you wanted to put directions on this document, you could. You could repeat those directions. I could copy these directions and I could paste them on the document if I chose to. So it's up to you. Just deleting the attached below. So now we have a document. We say that students can view it, but we want students not necessarily to be able to edit it. We want to make a copy for each student. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy for each student. So our assignment is almost complete. Now I have to decide, do I want to send this out to all students? So I had a lot of questions about this in the survey. The beauty of Google Classroom is that you do not have to assign every assignment to all students. You can 
choose which classrooms you want to assign it to. So if you have three sections of US history and you want to assign this assignment to three, all three sections, you can click on three classrooms. So it's a great um, way to save some time. For this case, I'm just gonna assign it to the one classroom called Beyond the Basics webinar. I can decide whether I wanna have it be to all students, or maybe I only want to select an assignment for certain students. Right now, there's only one student here to show you. As far as grading goes, and I had a lot of questions about this, you can assign any number of points or make an assignment ungraded. So I can click ungraded if this is something that I want to give students feedback on. Um, it doesn't have to have a number assignment attached to it. Uh, when I teach my undergraduate students, I make a lot of their assignments worth one point because they have to turn in a portfolio. So the one point just tells me that they've completed it and I've received it. You can make something worth out of four points if you use a rubric that's four points or five points. So you decide there what the total number of points for the assignment should be. So I'm going to go ahead and say four points there. The due date. You can set a due date for an assignment. When you do that, students will get a reminder prior to the due date that the assignment is due. And if they turn it in late, they're going to get a notification that says they that they completed an assignment late. So that's something that you need to consider on a case-by-case -case basis. When I was a high school teacher, I typically didn't assign due dates for projects because my my ultimate goal was that they were showing me what they learned, um, not that the project came in by noon on a particular day. So you can decide whether or not you want to have a due date. Just be aware that students will be told that something is late if it doesn't get turned in by the time you indicate. So, you know, at this time where we're trying to maybe minimize some anxiety over our unusual situation. You know, you want to make sure that you're communicating with students very clearly what that due date means. Um, for this case, I am going to create a due date so that I can show you a feature that comes in later. Now, it says topic. I, I haven't created any topics, so I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. I'm going to click Assign. So it's taking a second to assign because it's making a copy of the document for each student. It's taking longer than normal. Okay. So from the teacher's view, you can see that in the classwork tab, there is one assignment. Now I'm gonna go over to the student view. So I am a student in my classroom uh, here because I have a trainer account. Unfortunately, right now, Google does not have the capability for teachers to see the student view. There are a couple workarounds for that. If you have a personal Gmail and you know somebody else with a personal Gmail who doesn't mind you doing this, you could create a classroom with your personal Gmail and ask a friend or family or just create a second personal Gmail for yourself and then you can see what the assignments look like on both sides. You cannot use a personal Gmail with a Worcester Public Schools classroom. So we can only add people to classrooms that have the at WorcesterSchools.net uh, domain address. So as a student, I just saw that the stream was updated. So let's take a look at the stream. As a student, in the stream, I'm going to see all of the things that happened in the classroom since the last time I logged in. Basically, the stream is a chronological list of events in the classroom. So I can see that someone named Laura Cahill posted a new assignment called Sample Assignment. As the student, I can click on the assignment here and it will open up. 
So I see there's a sample assignment. I can see when it was posted. I can see how many points it's worth. I can see the directions for the assignment. I can add a class comment. So it's very clear here that if I were to comment, everyone in the class would see that comment. I like that Google does that. They always indicate whether or not it's a class comment or a private comment. The dialog box over here on the right shows a box that says my work. So this has um, the document attached right here. And I think we have somebody unmuted, so if you could mute. Let's see. I can do it from here. There we go. All right. Um, so the dialog box right here has the document that's been attached for me. It has a chance for me to add or create something and it has a turn in box. So let's take a look at this. I know the teacher attached a document for me and it says, please write a sentence. So as a student, uh, this is my sentence. Okay, so now I'm gonna say I'm all set with this document. I like what I have here. This is perfect. Notice what Google Classroom did. It named the document with the name of the account right before it. So my account is called Trainer3. If your student is named Alex Smith, then Alex, it would appear to be Alex Smith right here. So Google automatically, when you create a copy for each student, it automatically names the document with the student's name, which is a great feature. Then I can click Turn In. If I am confused about the assignment as the student, I can add a private comment right here. I hope this is what you were looking for. So maybe I just want to ask the teachers, is that what you were looking for? And I'm going to, going to go ahead and click Turn In. So let's go back to our teacher view and I'm gonna go into the classwork tab. And the only assignment in the classwork tab is still our sample assignment. So I'm gonna open that assignment. I can see that one person has turned it in and zero, um, zero are waiting to turn it in. There are no other students assigned. I can click on view assignment and this is what I see. When I click on this student, trainer three, it opens up a dialog box to their work. I can see that they put a private comment here. I hope this is what you were looking for. I can write a comment back to that student. I can open their document here. So this grading window is relatively new to Google Classroom. It is an amazing um, tool because it has so many great features to it. This grading window allows you to see any attachments that that student has turned in. It allows you to toggle between students. It allows you to grade and it allows you to uh, comment to that student. So I want to show you some of these features. So first, it shows you the name of the student that you're on and whether or not the work has been turned in. When you click this menu, you can actually see, you'll be able to see a list of all the students and whether or not their work is, has been turned in or whether it's still unsubmitted. The other way you can toggle through students, like if you just want to sit down and you know, give feedback on a whole bunch of work, you can scroll through students with these arrows. So right now I have just one student in here. Because it is a Google Doc, you can comment on the Google Doc. So just staying here in the middle of the page for now. The directions were to please write a sentence on the sample assignment document. So I can highlight this and say, this is a complete sentence, but I would like more 
detail about the topic. So again, to create a comment, you can highlight any area of the document and a little dialogue, a little comment box pops up and it will then attach, I can say great, it will then attach that comment to that particular section of the document. This is a great way to give feedback. So if I click on this comment, it's going to turn the part that it was commenting on bright yellow. If I click on this comment, it's going to turn the part that I was commenting on bright yellow and it moves it over. So the student can see like, okay, I can see my teacher commented here, ah, this is the comment. It gets larger and moves over closer to the document. So this is one good way to communicate. The other great way to communicate is by using the comment bank. So if you are a teacher who uses a lot of the same comments over and over, taking a look over here at the right side of the screen, the first icon basically shows you an outline of the, of the student's assignment. The second icon is a comment bank. So what you can do is if you use a lot of comments over and over, you can click add to bank, um, more detail, please. I'm gonna add that comment to my comment bank. I want to add, um, check punctuation. I'm worried about my spelling as I'm, yep, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so my comment bank now has three comments. So what I can do is I can copy my comments. So let's say that I wanted this to be, you know, a different, um, punctuation. I can highlight that period, click to add a comment, and then I can copy that comment and paste it so that I'm not constantly typing those comments. The other thing you can do with the comment bank, you can highlight, click to start a dialog box, and if you use the pound sign, it will automatically pull up the comments from your comment bank. So I can say more detail please and comment. So let's go back to the grading portion of the right side of the screen here, this window. It tells you which files are attached. So there's only one file attached, which is the one that you created for the assignment. It gives you a spot to put a grade if you choose to, and it sees any private comment conversation that's going on. So trainer three said, I hope this is what you were looking for. Now as a teacher, I am going to say, please see document comments. And I'm going to post that. Because the student turned this assignment into me, they cannot edit the document until I return the assignment. This is an important feature that a lot of teachers aren't aware of when they start. When a student submits some type of file in Google Classroom, it switches the ownership to the teacher in the classroom on that file. The student does not have access to edit the document again until the file is returned. Google sets this up so that the student doesn't turn it in to be on time, but then continues to work on it and change it before the teacher gets to grade it. Or the teacher, uh, the student changes it and says, no, I did have that, you, you know, you just missed it. So it's sort of this, this um, it sets up like a feedback loop type of situation. So I'm not gonna grade this right now because I'm looking for more detail. I'm just gonna return it to the student. It will prompt you and just say, are you sure you wanna, you know, send this back with no grade. Google doesn't require you to put a grade ever, so you can just do feedback in classroom without a grade at any time. 
So let's just see what this looks like from the student point of view. And hopefully um, this has been helpful. So in the stream, you will not see any grade information as a student. All you see is the things that happen. So let's take a look at classwork tab. And I'm gonna click on my assignment and I wanna view the assignment as a student. I can see that the teacher has said to me, please see the document comments. So now I need to open up the document and I can see all of the teacher's comments there. So as a student, I can write back and say, what do you mean? Or whatever. So you can continue to um, use, those doc use those comments that way. As a student, if I feel like I've done everything I, I can do, I can then click turn in again. And it just basically shifts the ownership back and forth between the student and teacher. So that's one great way um, during this time to have students um, send work and, and have some feedback. Another way you could do this, so I'm going to show you this quickly, and we, we have some videos and some help on this um, available that I'll share with you. You could create an assignment that just says attach weekly work and not attach any documents because you're expecting the students to attach documents. So then you decide your points, you know, maybe it's ungraded, maybe you give it a due date of um, May 7th or whatever that is. Um, again, there's no topic yet. We're going to take a look at that and then I'm going to assign it. From a student point of view, the student will see, let me go back, did I not name it? Oh, there it is, attach weekly work. So let's see, I'm gonna refresh my student screen. Oh, there it is. So now I'm in my classwork tab as a student, I can see that I have another assignment. So I'm gonna click the assignment. This just says attach weekly work. So this is where the student would use the add or create button and attach their work. When a student clicks on add or create, they can either attach work from their Google Drive, they can attach a file that's attached to, um, uh, that's downloaded on their computer. If they created something like a YouTube video or something, they could, they could attach the link to the video. So the link is anything that would have a web address. Or maybe the student needs to create a document right here. So a student can actually create their document right from that attach work. And then once that document is created, so it again, Google names it by the student and it gives it um, the name of the assignment. And as the student, I can click turn in. So students do not have, teachers do not have to attach something in order for the students to send something to you. So again, you would do the same thing. You can view the assignment, you can click on the student, and you can open up their work that way, and it opens you back up to that grading menu. So you could take a look at student work. Um, this was ungraded. So there's no option to grade here. It's just an option to add comments. If you make an assignment ungraded, you can still comment back and forth, but there is no option um, to add a grade unless you were to type it in the comments. The comment bank is still there. So your comment bank goes with your account. It'll always stay the same. So now as a teacher, let's take a look at this. My classwork, tab is going to get very messy if I just keep creating assignments and layering them. So let's take a look at this. I want to create a topic because I want to organize my um, assignments in, a top, uh, in topics so that the students can find them and I can find them. I'm going to create topic. I'm going to call this weekly work. and I'm going to click add. I'm going to create a topic called daily 
assignments. So if you already have a bunch of assignments and no topics, you don't need to worry because you can add them later. Um, so on this sample assignment, I'm going to hover over until the three dots show up. I'm going to click edit this assignment. So now over here in the right where the topic shows up, I'm going to click daily assignments and save it. So now that assignment falls under the daily assignments topic. For the weekly work assignment, I'm going to click edit, go over to that dialog box on the right, and click weekly work and save. So topics can be added before or after you create assignments. If I create a topic called reading and say add, I now have three topics, reading, daily assignments, and weekly work. I can click and drag these to rearrange them in whatever order I want. The next time I click to create an assignment of any kind, when I click on the topic tab, I'll have the options to assign something to a particular topic. So I'm going to close that out. I want to take a look at a couple of the settings that may be very useful for you. Um, if I am in the main page of Google Classroom and I click on what some people call the hamburger menu, this three lines menu in the upper left corner, the first thing that appears at the top of all of your class, class rooms is a to do button. I use this all the time to know what has been turned in and what hasn't. So if you click on the to do button, it's going to open them up for every single class. So you can select just the class that you want to see the to do button for or the to do list for. I'm sorry. It's like it's like a um, agenda or a to do list. So for beyond the basics of Google Classroom, I know that um, two assignments have been turned in and those are the ones that I need to attend to. Once I have um, graded both of those or graded one of them, I can click and say mark is reviewed and it will no longer show up in the to-do list. Students also have a to-do list. So I can click on that three lines in the upper left corner of the hamburger menu, click to do. And as a student, this will show me all of the things that I need to do for all classes. Or I can just click on a particular class. So that to do menu um, is very handy. And if you did put a due date, it will show the date that it's due right in, in the middle there for students. So I want to take a look at a couple of other settings that people mentioned in um, the survey. When you are in a particular classroom, you can change settings for that classroom. So let's take a look at these. So when you click on the gear wheel and open up settings, it shows you the name of the class. So if you ever want to change the name of the class or add any other details, you can do that here. It shows you your code. Now the stream, you can set that students can post and comment in the stream. Some of you may, people have reached out to us to say that um, that stream is getting very cluttered because students are starting conversations there. So what you can do is you can decide whether you want students only to comment if you post something, or you can take away the option for students to post and comment in the stream. So that's where you can manage your stream if you choose to. You can also decide not to have classwork show up on your stream. So if you remember in the stream, it shows the two assignments that I just created, but maybe I want to keep the stream for assignments and checking in and friendly messages. So I can decide to show all of an assignment 
only a condensed assignment, or hide notifications of assignments in the stream. So let's see what that looks like now if I save that. So now the stream does not show anything, but it does not remove the assignments from classroom. So I just wanted to take them out of the stream. Another feature that is new in the settings, so I'm back in the settings tab, is that you can generate a Google Meet link right from classroom. So what we've discovered, and this has taken a lot of trial and error, because when Google puts out features, they don't always um, make every feature available immediately, but you can generate a Google Meet link for this classroom by clicking there. And if you say save, now in the Classwork tab, you have a Google Meet icon. If you decide with students that you want to meet with them on Wednesday at 3 p.m., you can create an assignment or an announcement in the stream that they should click on the meet on whatever day at whatever time you want to meet. If a student clicks on the meet button before you are in there, as the teacher, they will not be able to access the meet. They can only access the meet when you are um, in the meet yourself as the teacher. So you have to generate, you have to open it up first and join the meet, and then students will be able to join. So you can just leave that meet link right in the classwork tab, and it's safe to do so. Um, another question that came up on the surveys that people responded to yesterday is notifications. I'm sure a lot of you are getting lots and lots of notifications. So from the main classwork page, if you click on the hamburger menu and scroll all the way down to settings, it's the last thing in that menu in the upper left corner. These settings apply to all of your classrooms, not just the settings for an individual classroom like we were just working on. So this is where you can manage your notifications. You can shut off all notifications from classroom if you choose. That means you will not get any notifications from any Google Classroom at all. If you leave your notifications on, you can decide which types of notifications you want to receive. So you can decide, um, you know, that you want to get comments or you just want to know when students submit work um, or when, when somebody returns work to you if you're a student in a classroom. You can also click on the menu at the bottom and you can turn on or off notifications for specific classrooms. I'm a member of a lot of classrooms because of doing trainings, so I only leave on the notifications for the classrooms where I need to respond to people. So just to remind you, that's in the upper left menu. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom to settings, that's where you can find your notification settings. <laughs> 